You're listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Time, energy, and resources. Today I'm joined by Jonathan Pritchard, in which we talk about punching with the power of the universe, juggling, and mind reading. So I am here with Jonathan Pritchard. Hi, Jonathan. Hello, hello. How are you today? I am doing way too well. I mean, it it's kind of one of those things when people ask me how I'm doing, I often have to undersell it because of how much fun I have every day. Oh, wow. So I, I'm one of those guys that's just like, oh, you know, hanging together, but really on the inside of <laughs> like, today's amazing. <laughs> so you're so you do the opposite of what most people do, which is that they they upgrade it to fine. Exactly. So, I have to downgrade it to really well. <laughs> oh, well, that's 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 excellent. I'm I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear you're doing really well. And keeping with that tone, why don't you go ahead and tell people um, what you do, which, as we know, is is a part of who you are. So if you want to go ahead and tell us that, feel free. Yeah. The kind of long story short is i am fascinated by why people do what they do and how they tick and for the past about 10 years traveled the world as a mentalist which is essentially a magician who graduated to mind reading tricks and after a decade of doing that i realized that the psychological tricks i'm using on stage are applicable to business life relationships all that fun stuff so instead of just uh, helping people forget their problems for an hour during the show, I now kind of teach them how to solve them long term. So that's it. And it's a, that's excellent. That's very succinct. I could learn a, a thing or two from you about being succinct. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> the um, the 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 mentalism would it be the the mentalist stuff that you do uh, is is a portion of that also hypnosis and some of the some of the stuff that 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 comes from hypnosis kind of there are elements of hypnotism in what i do but i wouldn't consider myself to be a hypnotist it's it's kind of like i can juggle fire but i wouldn't bill myself as a fire juggler right it's kind of like i i specialize in mind reading tricks some of that uses linguistic programming uh verbiage all that kind of fun stuff relaxation visualization but if I if I try to do a straight hypnosis show, it it all falls apart. In fact, I, I actually filled in for a buddy of mine who's a phenomenal hypnotist. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can do it. I could not do it. <laughs> I was uh, skipping ahead there. But uh, yeah, there's there's limits to my skills. And that's one of well, them. I think that's important. I mean, I mean, not, not to be all business, but there's a book called The Myth of Excellence in which it explains that. You can't be good at everything, and, and the moment you try to be good at everything, you you'll, you're going to fail. You're done, and that's when you, that's when your business goes out of business because you have to pick something that you lead with that you're excellent with, and then the stuff you're good at, and then the stuff you say, you know what, I don't I don't really do that. Um, someone else does, but I don't do that. So I think it's important to be actually aware of that. Oh, dude, a thousand percent. I mean, I I have more hobbies and things I get paid to do than most people. But even then, most of that is because I realize really quickly what, one, I'm not good at, and two, things I wouldn't enjoy doing. So right. if it doesn't meet both of those, I just, I nope out very quickly. They're just like, nope, not going to do this. But I've never had a, a regular job. Well, I mean, I had one for nine months as an experiment, and I was invited to pursue other opportunities, as I like to say mm -hmm. it. Uh, because I'm a horrible employee. Uh, but when, let's see, I graduated college in 2006. So since 2006, I've been working for myself and in partnerships and contract kind of things. Mm -hmm. So when I don't have eight hours a day to spend at the office working for somebody else, I've got eight hours every day to practice, to learn, to read, to go for a walk, to do whatever I want. So I've learned how to do all sorts of crazy stuff. So my motto is Jack of all trades, master of one, right? So once you master that one thing, you now have a context and a frame of reference right. to understand everything else. But you have to know that topic inside and out, upside down, forwards and back 
And then once you are an expert at that one thing, then you can kind of go, oh, this is just an, an analogous situation to what I'm already an expert in. So you learn really fast once you've learned everything about one topic. That's an excellent lesson. And, and, it, and it speaks a lot of execution of saying, look, you know, you did this, but keep going, keep following through and get really good at that and say, that's, that's where my eggs are. That's the basket. And then you kind of see the peripherals of that, right? To say, okay, I'm really good at X. So Y and Z are kind of really close by. So that makes sense. And I'm kind of good at those too. So it might be kind of fun to pursue those as well, but I'm sticking with X because that's my thing. Right. For me, it's public speaking, entertaining an audience, being a good communicator through leveraging applied psychology. Like that's, that's it. That's my, my zone of expertise and everything else that I do is an extension from that. And just kind of an exploration of why people do what they do and how can I get people to do what I want them to do and make it seem like it's their idea in the first place. So it's just, these are the things that keep me up at night. Like literally, I have trouble going to sleep at night because I'm just sitting up thinking about why people think the way that they do. It, it, it's literally my life's obsession and and I, I just go on for hours about it. Well, and you probably will with me because the, I'm fascinated too. And I'm a... Uh... Our Venn diagrams kind of kind of overlap a bit on that area because I'm obsessed and fascinated with time, energy, and resources because I feel that life is made of those three things. No matter what you're doing, you're spending at least one or more, and sometimes you get one of those back, never time, but you get one of the other ones back sometimes. And sometimes, in the case of energy, you're giving and getting at the same time. And I talked to someone who um, was a teacher who worked with autistic kids, and she, she found it incredibly rewarding, but at the same time incredibly draining at, to the point where she had to just sort of step away. So she was getting and giving at the same time, which can be really confusing. But I'm also fascinated, and I would use the word obsessed, with how do people do that? Like, like how did how do you manage your day today? Like, after this podcast, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to do that? Is this Friday for you? Do you feel like it's kind of weekendy? How long do you normally work? You know, all that, all that stuff. You know, is your job your hobby? Or do you have a job, a career, or a calling? Do you have both? So... I'm fascinated with that, and I ask lots of questions, yeah. and that's why I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that you're here, and I'm thrilled that you have a slightly overlapping passion because you're you're fascinated with how people tick too. Exactly. So I basically wake up on Saturday every day. Like it's, I I don't have to spend time with anybody I don't want to. I don't have to go anywhere I don't want to go. I I don't have to put on pants if I don't want to. Like it's I've got full total control of my time the people who are in my life and how I spend my resources. So the way that I've learned to do that is kind of what I call thinking like a mind reader, because we're all the alchemists of our own life, right? So <laughs> it's like the, the world's most famous alchemist is Isaac Newton. Right. He right. discovered the laws of gravity and thermodynamics, and he codified calculus, like just man alive, he's a smart dude. And he also believed in the power of alchemy, but right. he was on a mission exactly. to find the philosopher's stone, which is the, the one thing that could transmute lead into gold, right? But when you think about it, time is our lead, right? It, it's worthless. Everybody gets it. And not everybody has a philosopher's stone to understand how to transmute their time into value and every other resource, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's why, to me, it's like the resource is time. And only through the power of your thinking and imagination and ability to imagine a different future and then putting energy into making that come real, that's how you transmute your time into any other resource. So that's why I would say that, that we are the magicians of our own lives. We're our own alchemists. But if you want to look into the magician metaphor a little deeper, it's like, you know, for the magician, for the mentalist, it's just another day at the office, right? It's, it's just, I do this, then I do that. And suddenly people clap because their minds are blown. But to the audience, it's impossible. There's no way that you can do that. 
So if there's something in your life that you know is possible and somebody else is doing it, but to you it's impossible, that's because you're thinking like an audience member and not like a magician who mm -hmm. knows exactly what strategies and steps to take to make magic happen. Right. And, and expressing it like uh, time equals lead is a very fascinating way of looking at them. And of course, you, you talking about alchemy is just, just makes me tickled pink because you're on the Alchemy for Life podcast. And it's, it's, <laughs> um, it's my way of seeing the world is that we have, we have um, a, a, a vial, like an Erlenmeyer flask, one of those pretty flasks mm -hmm. full of a liquid. And we pour out a little bit here. We pour out a little bit here. We, we get a little bit back. And sometimes at the end of the day, we like a drop comes out, but we need more. And it's all about a limited supply in there and how we spend it and how we get it back. And that's a great way to look at it, that using the, the, elk, uh, the, um, the, the lodestone, the stone that he believed could do that, which is also fascinating because lead and gold are only, what is it, one electron off? I might, I might have my science wrong, but it's only one, it's either an electron or, uh, it, so if you literally add one, it turns into the other. That's the way that they're, Right. That's the way they are in the periodic table. Right. So there was some thought to that. That made some sense. Thanks. And that's the, the thing. The difference between time and money or free time or happiness, enjoyment, all of that is how you think about how to spend your time. Like that's that's it. That's all it boils down to. And in the world of digital reality, Right. We're abstracted from the physical limitations of the physical world. So through the power of the Internet, we can be in a million places at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. Broadcast journalism started that. But now with the Internet, anybody can do that. Right. right. Your podcast can be listened to thousands of times in a single minute. Like, that's amazing right. to me. So that Gutenberg guy who started the, the literacy revolution and and started the, the revolution that got rid of monarchies and all that kind of stuff because information is freely valuable, he's a chump compared to the internet and the power of creation that we have right now. Like, whatever device you out there in podcast land are listening to this on is more powerful than what the the what apollo astronauts had to go to the moon like right. come uh, on exactly. what what are you doing if if you're not creating what are you even doing exactly exactly i mean it's like in, in back to the future when marty went back and he he took a, a film camera which which by today's standards was huge mm -hmm. and doc looked at it and said you have a portable studio well that can that that camera was nothing compared to an iphone now the iphone has even more, you know, it makes that camera look like like it's made of wood and powered by hamsters. So it's just incredible the amount of technology we have and the reach, you know, for good or bad, because some people aren't quite ready for that reach when they say things. But for good or bad, we have reach through Twitter and Facebook and social media in general to be able to be our own studio. I mean, and reach reach so many people that you're literally competing with the big studio. So it's just it's amazing. Exactly. And and what's really neat is the the iPhone. It is one of the most valuable products in the history of mankind. And it didn't happen by accident. So, like a bunch of really smart people sat down and asked a whole bunch of questions. Should we use aluminum or steel for the body and the casing? Well, steel interferes with the signals, so let's use aluminum. All right, next question. So you go through this this process of asking questions and at the end of it you've got this incredibly valuable product right well our lives are the results of the questions and answers that we have with ourselves right should i do this should i do that how do i manage my time how do i manage my resources and the quality of your life is literally the product of your design thinking your answers and questions that you're constantly asking yourself and people who never wake up to that fact, who never ask themselves better quality questions, live with a cookie cutter life just like it's off the rack and wonder why their life doesn't fit them like it was specifically tailored to them, right? It's like, well, you got to go through that process. You have to take ownership of the thing you're already doing. You're already doing the thing that makes your life amazing or awful. It's just you have to take ownership and realize what that process is. 
and suddenly your life can be something completely different than what it is right that's that's what really gets to me are, are people that that are so focused on realism like i'm not a cynic i'm just realistic it's like i'm not a cynic i'm just skeptical i i want to know with what is like okay yes you have to know where you're starting but every single thing that that is in our life was created twice first in somebody's mind in their imagination and then in reality so i'm less concerned with what is and more concerned with what could be like what can i create in the world because with the imagination to dream it up and then spending the time and effort and energy to create it i can make my own reality that that is exactly right right so if if people focus too much on what is they're totally missing out on what it could be and in another way of looking at that is you know most magic tricks are really boring like they're they're so stupid in how they work which is what it is but what it could be is wonder and amazement and imagining beyond your limitations like that's what it it can be Right, so it, it's levitation, it's defying the laws of gravity. That's what it could be, but what it is, it's a piece of string, <laughs> right? right? So right. so people see that, oh, it's a piece of string, so that's boring. Well, you know what? The 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 work that you have to put in to create an, an, an unbelievable life is really boring. It, you just show up, you do the work, you get the results. It's not just wishing, hoping, and praying, and well, I'll just put it out, out into the universe. No, it's consistent effort done every day, and it compounds over time, but people don't see results right away, so then they give up. But they're often like, well, I'm just not motivated to do the thing. Well, you know what? Get results, and then you'll be motivated. Motivation is the worst way to get anything done because I just don't feel like it. You know what I feel like doing? Sitting down and watching Netflix all day. Like that's what I feel like doing, but I know that's not the behavior that allows me to live a life that's just awesome. So I do what needs to be done so I can do what I want to do and and maintain that long term. Exactly, exactly. And and you touched on um <laughs> you touched on effort and and uh, I had a podcast called Think Positive Not, and so <laughs> it's about how like just people, people believe that just thinking positive makes stuff happen. And to me, thinking positive and finding that things happen is sort of a byproduct. It's not the, the 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 cause. You know, it's all about you know cause and effect. And you have to look backwards and see well, what was the cause of that actual effect? It wasn't just because you were singing and being happy. It's because you did those things along the line and there's a direct correlation between the things you do and the outcomes and and you know you know and things like and you know i don't mean to disparage anything but like the secret and things that are related to that i think those are a view of a real thing they're not a real thing but they're a view of a real thing so if you go well i thought i was really positive and this happened well you were positive which caused you to do this which you normally wouldn't have done and it caused you to do this which you normally wouldn't have had stamina for and because you followed through then that thing happened and so like you said it's all about effort that you put into something and you're right on you're spot on when you say showing up is like the first thing you need to do right yeah it's it's cause and effect it, it's it's what I call life karma. Like people misconstrue karma as this mystical, it just is and it it flows with what you believe. Nope. You take action, you create the effects in your life. However, most people lack the sensitivity or the wherewithal or the vision to see the consequences of their actions and therefore they falsely believe that they don't have any actions and consequences, right? right? So right. so it's kind of like, well, I've been taking this action and I've not been getting any result. Well, actually you have been getting results. It's just not the results you want. So you, you think you should just keep doing this thing, right? Or it happens on a time scale that, that they don't yeah. accept. I mean, 
I, I like to think they're too granular. Right, right. Because every action has a potential reaction, right? Because it it happens immediately and also not immediately, which makes it really frustrating. I mean, for example, like I toured colleges for ten years, doing my mind reading show as a as stage performer and character Johnny Zavant, Psychic of the Year 2027. Right, so that's that's my stage character for college shows. It's just kind of rock and roll kind of feel a little more than Jonathan Pritchard, <laughs> who's the corporate sales trainer and presentation skills trainer dude. So Johnny Zavant's my cool guy uh, persona. Well, you know, it's I, I, I could do a show and a uh, freshman sees me do the show and they sign up for my email list and they stay in touch and they go through college they graduate, they work somewhere, and now they've been doing that for a couple years, and they were involved with student activities in college, so you know, they they uh, let their boss know that they like planning things, so now they're, they're in charge of planning this year's awards banquet. And then they go, you know who does a great show that makes everybody feel like a million bucks and and puts all the spotlight on the volunteers and leaves everybody with positive message? That Johnny Zavant guy. Let me see if he's available. Well, it's what? Six years later? And now I just get an email out of nowhere. Seemingly nothing that I did made it happen. And this person goes, hey, are you available for this month's event sure why not so from my viewpoint it looks like it's just coming out of the blue and i didn't do anything to to get that interest email but really it's consistent effort over six years until that person has enough potential for it to pay off for me in order for it to turn kinetic right Mm -hmm. Exactly. But most people exactly. don't have six years worth of patience to lean on to start getting those results. That's why it, it it's one of the best sayings in the world. It takes 10 years to make an overnight make an, success. An overnight that's, success. That's, I was that's just why. going to say that. It's exactly that's why. Right. Yeah. Because, man, yeah. you're putting in 10 years worth of toil and effort for nothing. But you know what? You're you're crafting a structure that can withstand success and that takes 10 years worth of effort to do that because if you get successful overnight well you don't have the structure in place to handle it and then you spiral out and self-destruct right which is why most people who win the lottery end up broke Eggs. they literally do they and they end up broke because they they they're not they didn't build up the stamina they didn't build up the awareness and understanding of what to do with all that and it's just like somebody who has success dropped on them because of something you know genetics or their relationship to their parents or someone else they they spiral out they just they just burn out as opposed to the person who says no i've been working for this for 11 years now and I'm already here. You just got you, everyone else just caught up. Right. To me, so. Right. It's like, oh, are you a heroin addict? Well, here's a whole bunch of heroin. Like, what? That, I'm going right, to kill right. myself. Like that. That's that's yeah. not good. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I I I I completely confirm all that. Not the heroin. But I completely <laughs> confirm the other stuff. I can get from coffee and other things, but not, not heroin. Exactly. Um, th- that is really, that's good stuff. So you typically do, you work, do you work with individuals or do you only typically work with teams and businesses and groups? I, I usually work with teams and businesses because from my viewpoint, that's the way that I can help as many people as possible that like that's that's my mission to to change a million lives sure. and it's really difficult to do that one at a time uh, because it's like well i could stand in front of a class of 20 people at this this company that uh, it's like bp brought me in to speak at their national leadership conference l- last month so it's like i'm talking to 150 top executives at one of the biggest companies in the world okay that makes an impact how is Right. If if it's going to be one person, boy, it better be Bill Gates or, or Tony Robbins or or something like that, right? 
Right. And I, and I want to clarify on your behalf that you're not saying that a single person is not as equally as important as these people or that your time isn't worth the time of one person. You're not saying that. You're just saying your reach is much better with a group than it is a single person. Exactly. Exactly. So, people could misinterpret what you said. And I want to just make that right. clear because I, I totally get what you're saying. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody um, is super, super important. Right. So I, I have automated ways that I like to help people. It's kind of like when I was doing one on one coaching, the same ideas, the same conversations would keep coming up over and over again. And then I realized, right. oh, OK, these are common issues so I can address them and share how I think about those things in a way that don't require me actually doing it. So through the power of the Internet, I can now help thousands of people without me right. actively having to be there face to face. But it's still part of my mission to help change those lives. Right. And I can attest to that. And what I experienced, the genesis of where we are now is that I started out with the focus on doing one on one things via video coaching and respecting people's time that I created this whole system online that shows people's time, energy and resources on how it's spent on five facets of life. I had this cool graphical interface that people we could see where all this stuff was going. And like you said, it started to look like, OK, we're starting to encounter some similar things. And then I started doing the podcasting and the articles and I thought, well, I can tell a lot more people that same thing this way. Sure, it's not a personalized per se thing, but there really is a good core of it that reaches a lot of people. And then I got into the, the podcasting and so forth, in which I got a lot more feedback that way. And then involving other people like you, I could even get more delicious flavors of, of ice cream to give to people. So so I think it, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying about reaching groups and so forth. And I have to say, I, one of the best times I had was I, I spoke to Manpower. Uh, it was CEOs in transition. It was a whole big room full of CEOs in transition. And it was great to be able to say, here's a bunch of things that are affecting all of you right now. I can guarantee it. You know, I, I may not be 100% correct with every one of you, but 80% of what I'm about to say, you're probably experiencing right now. And, and was, that was a pretty yeah, neat that Yeah, that is super cool. Is it that what, what, kind of opened my eyes to it first was again doing those college shows uh, mm -hmm. you know college kids don't know that I'm not a rock star so to them I am a rock star and I will not disabuse them of that perception so I sign autographs after the show and posters and all that kind of cool stuff so I'm just like yeah I'm a rock star so <laughs> they're <laughs> <laughs> like I'll do a mind reading show and then I'll have a line that's an hour long that that these kids stand in to to get autographs. So it it is amazing to me that that they're willing to stand there for that long just to shake my hand and, and say hi. And and over time, I kept hearing the exact same thing. Oh, my God, you're traveling the world. You're getting paid for it. You're doing what you love. Man, you're living the dream. I can't even imagine doing what you do. Ding, ding, ding. Right. And that that was the magic phrase. I can't even imagine it. Yeah. I was like, well, if you can't imagine it, there's no way you could make it real. So here's how I think about things. So I started I, I started getting more excited to talk to people after the show than I was to do the show itself. Right. right? And then the same 20 ish conversations kept showing up the details would change the faces change but the concerns were exactly the same and i realized oh i could just put all of this together in a book and now when somebody goes hey what do you think about self-confidence or logic or public speaking they go you know what i put it in this book here you go so that that's the origin of my book think like a mind reader shameless plug so that's that's kind of where where that project was born. Oh, absolutely. And uh, there's ample there's there's time throughout this entire chat for as much plugging as you want, because it's all about who you are. I mean, and if all this stuff squirts out of you, then that's who you are. And that, you know, and a book is a book is such a logical a logical conclusion and, and I don't want to say conclusion because it sounds like an end but it's just a logical thing because when you get out there and you interact with human beings and you learn and you learn and you keep learning you keep amassing 
this wealth of knowledge. And you can only say so much in a podcast. You can only say so much in a chat. And you can only say so much to somebody in line or even 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 in a presentation. And you, and you think, man, there's a lot more. There's a lot more here. And there's things that are important I haven't touched on because this is a slightly different audience. And I think a book is just a great thing. And I say that because I just, I just published a book not too long ago about the mechanics of relationships because my obscene fascination with how we all connect in relationships and things. And I just finished that and I'm already almost done with the sequel to that. And I thought, how could I possibly have more information? I thought I squirted it all into this book. So a book is such a logical vessel for what you're doing. And I, and speaking of your book, can you please explain, um, what, what is that? It's not a, a bra- bracket underscore bracket like a mind gotcha. reader. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I I basically, I went, you know what? I'm having the same conversations over and over again, like Groundhog Day. I, I have to get out. So that's kind of why I wrote the book. I was like, I'm looking forward to the conversations I get to have with people after they've read this book because I don't know what those conversations look like because I'm trapped in these. So that's, <laughs> I'm just so glad it's trapped between pages now and and people can can know my thoughts and and then come back and go, hey, have you thought about this? Uh, so, so the thing about those brackets like a mind reader is blank like a mind reader. I'm, I'm not right. psychic. I can't actually read minds. I'm just a really good communicator who has learned to do it so well that it appears as though I can read minds, right? So everything that I do is I help people blank like a mind reader because anything, (laughs) anything in their life where other people are involved or how they're involved, which is everything. I can help them do that like a mind reader. So it's negotiate like a mind reader, present like a mind reader, uh, love like a mind reader, whatever it is. Be so good at it that it it looks like you've got precognitive, supernatural, clairvoyant, telepathic powers. And that's clearly the only answer. It couldn't be that you just understand fundamental motivational psychology so well that that it looks effortless, even though you've worked really hard to learn how to, to make it look effortless. Exactly. And I'm assuming when you do a book signing, and when I say assuming, I mean, here's mm-hmm. an idea. I'm assuming when you do a book signing, when you, when you open the book and sign it, I'm, I'm assuming that as the, in the blank, that's where you write the thing that the people are excited to do. Cause that, that'd be so cool. If I went to a book signing of yours and I, I read the book and I, the book helped me to do that thing. I would want you to write that thing. On the, dude, on the book. <laughs> dude, I, all right. I've got to update the, uh, the internal file now. Uh, yeah. Cause that, that <laughs> kind of like my, my speaking consulting hub is like a mindreader.com, but the book is think like a mindreader.com because it's, it's all about mm. here's how to frame your interior process to, to right. relate to the world more effectively more creatively but dude i love that idea of leaving the blank right. blank inside the book to, yeah. to sign this you, that's awesome you write it in yeah and of course again i'm also going to say i assume also which of course is a suggestion <laughs> that because you own the domain like a mind reader you can use what's called a subdomain so that you have a word dot like a mind reader which means you literally have control over that single domain to turn it into hundreds of domains by saying think dot like a mind reader exactly. uh, explore dot exactly and then you can redirect those to other things and each one could actually point to an article that you've written or yeah. something or, or a talk that you've had that that's the that's the long-term goal i'm just milking this cow for all it's got and but but that is <laughs> that is part that sounds of- so sincere <laughs> <laughs> like i i i i am <laughs> well yeah are you getting the most right, out of it right. to, to paraphrase well, you? <laughs> the, the, the thing is I built a mind reading trick into the book itself. So anybody who mm. buys the book can use the book to fool their friends. And that nice. experience helps you understand how other people see the world, right? Because you know what you're doing and now you're learning to communicate in a way that is really abstract and foreign to most people. And it's the 
when you start getting really good at creating the effect, you realize how to create the effect no matter what it is, right? Because most people think only what do I want to say? And that is really limiting to how effective they can be as a boyfriend, as a girlfriend, as a boss, as a leader, as a anything, right? So a really effective communicator thinks, what effect do I want to have on the listener? And how can I create mm -hmm. that as quickly and efficiently as possible? That's what it's like to right. think like a mind reader. Perfect. But that, that's also that why sounds... uh, I don't have a digital version of the book because that experience is so central to understanding my whole mission I would be cheating people out of uh, a huge part of of why I did the thing in the first place. So it's only available as a physical product. You can't just get it as an ebook or as an audio book. You've got to have the physical mm -hmm. thing. And there's yeah, and that and that's an excellent reason. And you are in very solid footing. And I, and see, I've I have my technology evangelist cape that I wear sometimes. And even though I have that. I feel that the digital medium is only for some stuff and certain kinds of books are ones you need to, f to hold in your hand and you need to mark up and you need to scribble all over and you need just, just to revisit it almost like it's a manual and, and things like that. And the kind of stuff that you're talking about lends itself very well to that. And I think that's well, thank great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. I, I just love it. And, and speaking of, of that and this, this sort of journey, um, it you sound – that you like you've been focused at when it comes to like time and how you've gotten to where you are now, was there a point at which you, you didn't exactly see this light at the end of the tunnel and not necessarily that you're going through a tunnel, but more of a, this goal Were you, did you, were you kind of to the left and to the right and did you meander or were you, did you say, okay, I, I don't know where the, the road leads? In my personal life, I meandered a lot more than my professional life. Um, I, I kind of lucked out in that when I was 13, early summer, I learned how to juggle from my dad. Like He and all of his brothers knew how to juggle, and I was like, that's super cool. So he taught me how to juggle when I was 13. About a month later, I, I get to be a part of this summer program that was run by a retired street performer, clown, juggler guy who retired to the mountains of North Carolina from South Florida. And he was like, oh, you know how to juggle. Do you want to know how to learn to, to juggle pins? Yeah, sure. So I, I learned that really quickly. And he goes, hey, well, oh, nice. you can juggle pins. You know, it's not that much different to set them on fire. You want to learn how to juggle fire? Yeah. So at 13, I'm juggling fire, right? And, and learning all these kind of clown skills and circus feats uh, hammering nails up my nose, eating fire, all that kind of thing, oh. right? And my parents were like, well, he's learning from a professional. And if he gets hurt, he's young, uh, he'll heal quickly. All right, yeah, whatever, go for it. So <laughs> I, 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 very, I didn't realize it until much later, but I, I benefited greatly from a mentor-mentee dynamic my whole life. Right. So he was my first mentor. I went off to college, got plugged up with this guy, um, James Randy, who's a worldwide oh. name in the kind of science and skepticism right. world. And right, which is how you got involved in the skeptic stuff, because you've done you've done a number of those conventions exactly. as well. I, I helped run the amazing meeting for 13 years uh, in, until oh, it wow. was retired. Uh, so, yeah, I. That like that's where I got to have dinner with Christopher Hitchens, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, wow. like all those dudes. Captain, yeah, Disillusion? exactly. Like we we've hung out, right? Like we we've, yeah. Nice. So like that's those are my people, <laughs> and, and it's sure. all been because of my mentor mentee dynamics. I just I find somebody who's wow. just a huge name in the world that I love. And then figure a way out of being valuable to that person and then learn straight from the fire hose. And and then I've saved myself a lifetime worth of trial and error because I just learned how to do it from them, which is exactly the same right. thing as having spent their lifetime learning how to do it. Right. 
stand on the shoulders of giants and, and reach for exactly. more. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And like that, I've, I've consulted for Chris Angel, been on America's Got Talent, uh, entertained the troops in South Korea several years ago. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I know what I'm doing, but you know, you stumble along the way. Like there have been some huge setbacks. I mean, I got married and now I'm not, and that's a whole story, but <laughs> you know, it's like, well, if you fail and don't learn the lesson, that's the failure. And it, it sounds kind of cheesy to go, well, there are no well, failures, I was just but say that. You know, yeah. Yeah. And I have to I have to cut in because that's such an important statement. Because it's such an important statement that doesn't sound like an important statement. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like you said cheesy, it sounds kitschy, it sounds like you say that when someone is laying there with a broken leg or or, <laughs> or is crying their eyes out because they feel like their their life is devastated. And what I've said a number of times is that the people that I talk to, the people that are the happiest, the people that are the the, the kindest are the people who have hit the worst, the rock mm -hmm. bottom, because they know where their scale is. They know they know where zero is. I mean, I, I spoke to a gentleman in one of the first discussions, double lung and heart transplant. Wow. Um, and, and now he run, he's run four marathons awesome. since then. Um, and uh -huh. and you know other people too. It's 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 you understand that somebody's been through stuff because they're nice, because they know where zero is, as opposed to someone that says, oh, I have a hangnail today. I don't know if, what I can do. I'm not getting out of bed, you know? And, and when you have these, these things happen to you, that learning is really important. Don't you dare try to tell a teenager that because that's, they're not in the mindset of understanding. Right. But when you get a bit older and you get this wisdom, you look back and you say, okay, no matter what, what did I learn from that? Because I'm not going to do that again. You know, and the only reason you know you're not going to do that again is because you learned, you went through that. And I learned quite a bit raising my kids for six years by myself. So that would have never, all the information and all the data I gathered and all the learning and the new skills I developed never would have come uh, out of that if, if things hadn't taken that turn. And I'm extremely grateful for all of that knowledge. I mean, I think it's, it's, you can't overstate that point. And, and like you said, people think it's a cheesy thing, but really you have to look back and go, what did I learn exactly. from that? Exactly. Here's how I see it is the mindset and the decision tree that you have installed in your uh, pre-conscious decision-making is exactly the same every single time. So you will mm -hmm. manifest the same results because you're making the same choices over and over and over again. That's why people who try to run away from their problems wind up creating the exact same problems again in a new town with new people. The details change, right. but the situation is exactly the same. And that happens over and over and over and over again until you wake up and go, wait a minute. I'm the only common denominator here. Maybe I have something to <laughs> right. do with this instead of just life is happening bit. to me. Maybe I have some sort right. of hmm, responsibility or co-creating power to this weird. Right. So then you start waking up right. to that and then you really start examining your values, your decisions, your actions, and then go, holy crap, I've been doing this the whole time. And that's exactly. when you learn the lesson. Then you make yes. different choices and those create different problems. And then you've got to become a different person if you want to have even more different problems. So like that's that's my life's goal is to have more interesting problems this year than I had last year. Like that's it. I, I know I'm never going to get rid of my problems. But good Lord, I don't want to keep making the same problems like I did in my 20s over and over and over again with just different people. Oh, I want I want really, really interesting, amazing problems. Right. And that's you hear that phrase with people sometimes. Well, that's a good problem to have. You know, <laughs> yeah. you hear people say that it's because they appreciate what you had to get to to have that quote unquote problem that you're dealing with. Like, oh, I don't know how to manage this much money. <laughs> you know, you know, what a you poor guy, you you know, or yeah, there's nine women that are really attracted to me. I'm I don't know what to do now. You know, maybe a lottery. I don't know. But um, <laughs> you, you talked about when you were in your 20s and it just made me uh, it laugh because I have to say. Well, I think you said you're 13. I don't know what I, I don't know in my life if I've ever had someone say to me, 
you know, it's not that much different if you set them on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's that's a good that's a very interesting thing to have someone say to you. You know, not a lot of circumstances create that. Right. Response. But I mean, it really isn't. It's exactly the same kind of rotation, same balance, same everything. It's just the other end is dangerous now. <laughs> right. Well, and, you know, and again, to go back to my assumptions, I'm going to assume one more time that your next book is going to be called, you know, it's not that much different to set. Them I, on fire. I love that <laughs> because. Because that's such a lesson in what you're saying. And I mean, it builds to the whole, you know, better problems, you know, better things create better problems. You know, it really isn't that much different. Just keep taking these these steps further and further and who right, you want to be. Right, right. But I, I'm currently writing my next book, or as I like to say it, exercising my demons. Uh, because I, mm. I don't write a book because I want to. It's because I have to, or I'll start yes. writing on the walls and in the shower, yes. and my sweetie will, will wonder. Amen to that, yeah, brother. So, Amen to that, uh, brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing a book on Kung Fu, uh, which I've done every day. I've missed like three or four days here every once in a while. But basically, I wake up, my feet hit the floor, I do Kung Fu every morning. Like, that's my morning ritual. And it's it's just amazing what what you can do with it because it's it's essentially just the science and technology of human integrity and living in alignment with the powers of the universe like it sound that sounds like crazy talk but it is so literal i mean if you obey the laws of physics you can punch somebody with the power of the universe like that's pretty darn cool so so that's that's it right and it gets to decision making. What do I do? Here's this dynamic situation that is rapidly unfolding in a whole bunch of dimensions. How do you manage that experience? So there are some fundamental key concepts and principles that if you obey, you can navigate your way through it. And uh, it, it starts with the beginning of the universe to geometry, to the simplest structure possible in our universe and building from uh, inorganic to organic levels to social to intellectual and beyond uh, of how Kung Fu is the embodiment of all those virtues and principles and ideas and stuff. It's just super cool. Yeah. So I don't know what it's going to be called. I don't have a title for it yet, but I'm like 200 pages in and it is it nice. is a beast. Like it's it goes some weird places like three fourths of it is crazy math geometry uh talking about archimedes and the archimedes palimpsest from the 1200s and how it was sold at christie's auction in the 90s and that's important because it shows us seven different types of infinity 2000 years before the 19th century mathematicians mm -hmm. rediscovered it but oh my god like yeah. <laughs> and I'd heard that in your glossary, you actually give the formula for Alchemides fire. Oh, right? yeah. You know, if you, if you want to set your enemies on fire <laughs> that will never go out, that that's the way to do it. <laughs> it's, in book. it's in your book. I would make sure, I would make sure that, that if there's any reason to buy it, it's because that's in the glossary. Right. So that's that's really cool. <laughs> but that is, that is so cool. This is so chock full of cool information. And I don't want to take much more of your time because, as I've said, I very much respect time and i especially respect yours this was this was so awesome of you to spend this time with me and us and the people listening and just all the information that you've given and all the stuff you've shared and i want to make sure that there isn't an end to that so the um the article that will be published along with this podcast will have links to all your goodies and i know that in the internet age you just have a domain all we have to just go to the domain but i'll make sure that we hit on your book and links to that stuff too so people can pick that up so uh, having said that, is there anything you want to shamelessly plug in addition or something you want to give a shout out to before we Beautiful. sign off? Well, thank you. Uh, well, first, I want to say, you know, the the guiding one of the guiding principles of my life is exchange of value for value. So I really appreciate the value of connecting with your audience and reaching new ears and sharing what it is that I'm passionate about and hopefully changing a couple minds out there and opening eyes to possibility. So it's not just a one-sided thing for me either. I'm getting a lot out of this too. So uh, if if you're out there in podcast land, yeah, I guess the the 
best place to go is uh yeah think like a mindreader.com because that's where the book and the video course lives um or jonathanpritchard.guide that's kind of my hub because i have so many irons and so many fires because i've got like chicago elite uh training.com for my executive high level personal coaching for just people local to chicago uh like compact self-defense i got like a mind read just I have so much going on. Uh, it could be another 50 minutes of me explaining the projects. So, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, you're welcome to come back. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. You take care. You know, if you're in a position like Cress where something takes energy at the same time it gives it, you may feel guilt feelings. You may feel a little bit guilty about wanting to stop. And that's normal. And a lot of things in life that really do give us the most energy are also the ones that take it because we put so much into it. And in her case, working with autistic kids did exactly that. It took as well as gave. And she had the presence of mind to know that, you know, perhaps there was a different way she could do this or that there really was a longevity. There was an end to this that, you know, she couldn't do it forever. And I think it's far better to decide to change or even end something than it is to keep going at it when you know you're just you've just sort of been drained so I think that's a really valuable lesson for anyone who does or is involved in something that's pretty challenging to know that you know I can't do this forever I'm gonna enjoy what it does to me and for others until it's over hey it's Mark thanks for listening hopefully you found something tangible in there If you're not subscribed, it's a really easy thing to do so you don't miss these. Check out Alchemy for Life on Instagram. And if you enjoyed this, I would love it if you'd give it a rating. And I will see you next time.